I'm Melanie Aldridge and I'm the Development Manager for the Alliance for Natural Health and my background is as a practitioner and a lecturer in complementary medicine but um, I've now sort of devoted my time for the last three and a half years full time to the Alliance for Natural Health so I'm no longer practicing. I think for consumers the, the best thing to do is to look at a triangle and um, if they can see that um, there are um, ingredients at the top, the dosages and what can be said and um, the legislation covers those three areas basically so when, um, when people go into um, a store and they go to buy a food supplement they're used to being able to, um, to look on the bag, they can see the dosage of what they're buying um, they can look on the label to see what the label claims are to, to have it explained to them um, what the product is that they're buying and, um, and also um, what ingredients are in it and what we see coming with um, different parts of the legislation is that all of that over the next two to three years is going to change radically from what consumers have been seeing already. So um, if, I just, if I just talk in terms of what is going to be rolled out, and um, it's important for people to bear in mind that the machinery for all of this is already in place. And um, the European Commission have been using a process really of um, a political process called gradualism where they roll it out very, very slowly so the consumer doesn't really see everything happening all at once. But what I think people need to know is that the bite is going to come in the next couple of years and the machinery is in place. So what we're going to be seeing, um, first of all, is that um, next, um, through next year, we, um, we're going to see a lot of vitamin and mineral products probably disappear from the shelves across Europe as the derogation period ends. Now, the Food Supplements Directive, which came into force in 2005, allowed a four-year period where vitamin and mineral ingredients that weren't on the positive list, companies had that period of time to make applications to ensure that their products were able to maintain sale. And unfortunately, we've seen that the European Food Safety Authority has actually um, been withdrawing a lot of the dossiers because they didn't include the right data and um, although consumers are still able to buy the products, come the 31st of December 2009, when the derogation period ends, technically those products will then not be legally able to be sold from the 1st of January 2010. And that is going to be a very big change for consumers. Um, following that, um, we're going to see nutrition and health claims regulations um, biting as well, where um, companies have been able to make certain claims, health claims and nutrition claims for the products which make it very clear to a consumer. They go and look at two products on a shelf and they can read the label and they can then make a choice and that is all going to change um, come the middle of 2010 when there will be a generic list of claims provided by the European Food Safety Authority and companies that have certain ingredients will only be able to choose um, approved claims that are on that list. So you're going to see what we call um, a Me Too environment where imagine you have a range of products and say they all contain zinc but then they contain other nutrients as well. Up until that time companies were able to make a specific claim on the action of the product. They will no longer be able to do this. They will only be able to choose a claim for certain ingredients. So they may be able to say may promote a healthy immune system because it contains zinc but then the product next to it that also contains zinc is going to be able to say the same thing and the product next to that so you can see the problem the consumer goes in and says well now what do I buy and then the decision is going to be based on price um, not necessarily on therapeutic value or action of the product so we've then seen a change to what we can buy We've seen a change to how we go about making our choices and then we're going to end up seeing harmonised vitamin and mineral levels coming in where they are trying to make one size fit all across the whole of the EU and um, this just isn't really going to work in our opinion because you're talking about different cultures, different diets, different lifestyles, different um, cultural um, buying habits and suddenly you're going to have to fit into a box where people in Sweden are going to end up only being able to buy what um, people in Germany can buy. And where we've seen some countries in the EU having very restrictive regimes and others having more liberal regimes, 
Um, this harmonization is going to bring everything down probably to the lowest common denominator and that's, that's what we fear. So then consumers who are used to buying in certain countries um, higher dose supplements who are taking um, steps towards their own preventative health are suddenly going to walk in and realise that the product that they're used to buying um, is now going to be limited into what they can get. So if I just take that back in summary to the triangle again, you've got your, your problem with ingredients and we're going to see a lot of products disappearing at the end of 2009. You've got your problem with dosages. Um, we're suddenly going to see dosages probably being vastly lowered for some countries or maintained for others. And perhaps in a few instances, there will be a positive for some countries who've had restrictive regimes who are then going to see maybe slightly um, coming up. And then you've got a problem with what you can say. So a consumer is going to walk into a health food store or a supermarket and they're suddenly going to be faced with, you know, what do I buy? Where's my product? You know, what's happened to it? And the big thing here is to really understand that the machinery for this is already in place and people cannot afford to put their heads in the sand. Har harmonization, while it appears that um, this is a very positive thing when you are looking in terms of trade, and certain consumers might go, well, well, that means that you know I can buy products and there's free trade. And, um, and as, as I've mentioned already, there are some countries with very restrictive regimes and it might benefit those consumers to be able to buy other products. In certain instances, harmonization is not a good thing because um, you, you can't, there's too many cultural differences across all of the member states to suddenly make this one size fits all. And the other thing about the, the legislation is that um, it is meant to be about consumer protection and it's meant to be about trade. But what about public health? There's actually little or no consideration here of public health. And um, that would mean looking at declining soil quality, decline, declining food quality, um, looking at different diets. And this just has not been taken into consideration. So unfortunately, what we're looking at is a raft of legislation that is based on so-called consumer protection. But I would say here we see a lot of big corporate protection going on. But anything that starts to um, do away with people's freedom of choice in health care and freedom of choice of what they put in their body and, um, and the way that they actually manage their own health, that then starts to be a problem for consumer protection, really. And it also, anything that puts a block in the way of people and nature, and we're talking about people's access to concentrated food nutrients, which is basically nature. And so, again, there's a big question mark about whether this is really about consumer protection or about big corporate protection. So, in summary, with this raft of legislation that we're seeing coming in, where they've taken into, into account consumer protection and trade, they're not really considering the impact on public health of restricting people's access to food supplements, which are really concentrated sources of nutrients. So the big question really for consumers across the EU is, do they want to be part of the current sickness industry that we see happening everywhere, or do they want to start to be empowered to take responsibility for preventative care of their own health and their family's health? And I think really, if a consumer was to sit and ask themselves that question, they would actually choose to go for that option. Where possible, people do try and make within their own um, information and knowledge base that they've got the right decision when it comes to food and when it comes to food supplements and um, what we'd like to see very much is more education and more awareness so that people really understand the role of diet and lifestyle and, the, and in preventative medicine and food supplements plays a very large part within that and already when we look at consumers who are very well educated and well informed about this they choose to use food supplements as a preventative measure so that they don't actually have to get into that whole sickness industry. And if you look at the WHO guidelines where the accent is really on diet and lifestyle and health, unfortunately, this legislation that we're seeing doesn't seem to take account of that at all. And so really it falls to consumers now to take responsibility for their own health. Because looking across at the overburdened healthcare systems in most of the countries, they are not going to be able to support people's true health um, for future generations and so that's really what's at risk here. So a final word for the consumer really is to be aware, be informed and be empowered 
and take the time to go and have a look at some websites that will probably come up at the end of this information to, to have a look at what's going on and to realize that the EU machine is grinding out 24 seven, directive after directive, regulation after regulation. And if you don't want this to become a part of your own life, it's time now to really become aware and become informed so that you can take action. Thank you. Hello.